listening to Texas Fly Fishers. My name is Shannon and welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing News Report. It's a bit of news and a bit of reporting. And today we're starting off before sunup here in North Texas. The sun's about ready to creep on through the trees back there, but it hadn't gotten here yet. We've got some good coffee here staring you right in the eye. Carl Block, my favorite potter. Milano Luna. It's a Colombian Sumatra blend of beans from Starbucks. What can I say, Starbucks? I had a bunch of gift cards. When people don't know what to give you for Christmas, they give you Starbucks gift cards. They think you like coffee. I love coffee. But anyway, Milano Luna, very good, dark. Locally, I found some fish on Texoma the other day, right, at the, right as the sun was going down. So it's an early and late bite there on Texoma. And, uh, Texoma's really gotten under my skin. It's only about 45 miles that away. And I think that I'm gonna spend some more time there on that great huge lake on the border of Texas and Oklahoma because the winter time is a good time on Lake Texoma. You know, uh, there aren't many lakes that you can say that about, but this one has a good, abundant, a good population of stripers and the 57 degree temperature when it hits that, it is small, bow, small mouth bass city. So you gotta think about that too. The statewide reports slimming it down and keeping it real and, and revealing the secrets that they keep. There's only two lakes in Texas, the big, big calm water that have anything near a good report. Remember, I take this off of TPWD and you have to rank those down by one every time. So excellent is probably pretty good. Belton and Lake Levon are still in that highest ranking. Those are the only two lakes in Texas. You gotta take that with a grain of salt. You know, you can make fish happen. All you have to do is just keep trying every single day. Um, Again, the heat is really cool in the mornings, as you can see, before sun up and up to about 10 a.m. It's very, very reasonable. And then you might as well go to Whataburger because as it heats up during the day, the fish turn off, they're slow anyway, most places, and then that evening bite comes on. So we're talking about bass now. Carp are very, very, they're pretty much gone. There are a bunch of um, buffalo roaming around but you know how hard that bite is, and it's exceptionally hard in the fall compared to the spring when they have that turn on for about a week to 10 days. So take that with what is, for what it's worth. We're talking, we're talking bass bite, um, and if your lake has uh, the local population of hybrids, the same kind of things going on, except more so in the morning for hybrids. So we've had our grain of salt. Let's talk salt. Nobody's talking salt but me because uh, apparently there are secrets being kept on the Texas Gulf Coast and I don't blame them sometimes because it is a uh, fantastic place to fly fish. And right now on the Texas Gulf Coast, we are in the golden month of October. It's as gold as an Oktoberfest beer. I mean, this is the month to end the year. You know, we have our ups and downs throughout the year, but October is that month when uh, if you can get there, get there because it's not as crowded, it's cooling off, um, it's calm, and then it's everything that November, December, January, February, March are not. Because those months on the Texas Gulf Coast can be very windy, very unpredictable weather and that you're just exposed no matter what on the coast. So there is that. Uh, please know before you go. Let me give you a tip. As I'm waiting for my endorsement from Toyota, my new Toyota to arrive, guys, where's my Toyota? My old Toyota, I'm getting ready to have to put it down for a little while because, and I can't go anywhere without it because it's my tow, tow vehicle. It, uh, it's in trouble. So I, one tip for you older guys is don't listen for those brakes to chirp. Check those brakes because they don't chirp. Mine are burned to a crisp and now I've got to go in myself, do the rotors, do the pads, and uh, then I'm back on the road. You've got a tow vehicle, I have a tow vehicle, you know, and I need another tow vehicle. Toyota, if you're watching, God, just I'll grow the dreadlocks. Just I'll grow the dreadlocks. You give me a Toyota, I'll grow those dreadlocks. 
Um, but anyway, that's another subject for another time. Watch your brakes because they will go out before you can hear them go out. Old guys, old guys, old concert goers. All right, Texas Gulf Coast is hot. It's just hot. So you guys, if you can get to the coast, now's the time. And we're talking inshore fly fishing and even on the jetties because um, this, is one, this is the month where it ramps up and then winds down quickly. You've got to give it a go if you got a chance. There are some events coming up for fly fishing this uh, in the near future. Um, one of them is the Oktoberfish, and that is a Texas Hill Country fly fishing group that does this, and they've done it for years. They never send me a notice, so I never know until it's about a week away, which is what it is, the 12th and 13th of October. Oktoberfish. Aggieland Roundup, that's a little later on. I can't remember when that is, but if you look up here and hit that link, it'll take you straight to my page on www.texasflycaster.com where you can see those event flyers and websites and click through and get more information. Look, I you saw my story on, on Fly Fishing Club, I'm sure. I'm sure you guys watched it. There is another good function of clubs, in case I didn't mention it on that video. It's, it's been a whole week since I put that out, I think. Um, maybe not even that long. They have a good function that they do, and that is doing functions like these, these outings and things like that, that are gatherings where you can learn a lot from a, from a lot of people actually that show up about fly fishing in Texas. And that's a function that um, is underestimated, misunderestimated by me, probably, um, because I don't need as much information anymore. But if you're young and you're that sponge of a fly fisher that's taking me, you're, you're going down that black hole, go to these events. Um, you'll meet some people that you will uh, continue to know for the rest of your life, probably, in fly fishing and the rest of their lives very probably because some of them are kind of old like me and uh, they will give you information that you can't get elsewhere and they will show you things and, and the way to tie flies and things like that all kinds of things that that you can you can get but it will take you a lot longer than if you go to these events so remember that Aggieland that club is pretty active and becoming more uh, I'm becoming more aware of that that club as one that um, is really reaching out, doing outreach. Oktoberfish been there for years. Great location. Go check that out too. Okay, guys. One other thing, fly tying continues in Texas. It's all over the state. It happens at these stores, these retailers, and they have their scheduled events. Make sure that you get out there. Go to these events and at least watch people tie flies because tying flies is integral to the fly fishing experience, in my opinion. It's not that you have to do it, but you might like doing it, especially when we're approaching wintertime here in Texas, North Texas, and it gets cold and you can't get out and there's snow on the ground. That sun's about to kick through and kick me. Thanks for watching. You guys like and subscribe, please, and go to the website for a lot more in writing, www.texasflycasteron.com, <laughs> and on Facebook, at Texas Flycaster. If you're a Facebooker, I can't help you very much, but a lot of stuff I post on my website gets pushed over to Facebook, so there's that linkage. And there's a couple of, uh, also a couple of other pages I've started for people there that are very interesting on Facebook. Thanks guys. We'll see you next time on the Texas Flycaster YouTube channel.